some of the language of the Bible, or, or even some of the things that are happening, can be puzzling. You get used to it, but we're thinking about, and I was thinking about Abraham being tested by God, it said, being told to sacrifice his son, to kill his son Isaac. But then I'm thinking about it, although it's not the language we use, it seems horrific. But then I'm thinking about it, he puts it in a pattern of a, a conversation with God. I could do the same, say what's happened to me. Well, the devil told me this morning to lie in bed and don't get up. Well, I didn't see the devil. We're just thinking, uh, how we express things. If a couple came to me arranging to get married, they've never yet said, the Lord is calling us to be married. No, they just want to get married. They can love each other. They want to have a family and so on. But afterwards, or even at the time, if I then prayed and I, th I thank God for bringing them together, yeah, they follow that. And afterwards they could say, yes, the Lord brought us together, most unexpectedly, or in a natural way, and, and talk about what happened, and you could say the Lord was guiding. And I think if something like that would happened with Abraham, he was thinking, imagine this, what is the most, the best thing I could do to show my love of God? I really love God. And I would give up any, what's the most precious thing in my life? Now he had seen other tribes round about sacrificing to other gods, in particular to a god called Moloch, to which they had human sacrifices. They sacrificed their own children. You think of that, it sounds terribly cruel. But you're thinking, a man and woman wanting to honour God are willing to give up their own daughter or son. It must have broken their hearts. Not a cruelty. But imagine Abraham, that's the point. Abraham says, what can I give to God? What is the, how can I express my love of God? My most precious thing I have, my son, my love, my life, I would give that to God. Later, further discernment, he realized, yes, but that's not what God is wanting for me to kill someone. But when Abraham got to the stage when he could give everything to God, something happened to the man. So it was a test, not a test to see if he would do it or not, but something which would form that man, that he would never be the same man again, realising he would give anything to God our Lord, and his trust had got to that stage. But for us, you see, all the idea of the Old Testament sacrifices, I think why it's hard to understand is because what's the use? That's how we judge things. What does it produce? A sacrifice is simply saying, I want to give something to God, and I can't, but I, no, I must do something. So I will take something which is valuable and which is mine and destroy it, get rid of it, give it to God. Obviously God does want that. God, God says in one of the Psalms, I don't drink the blood of goats, I don't eat, I've got all, I don't need anything, I want your heart. But the way they express it, and this is natural in us, we want to give to God. And the only way we can think about it is by getting rid of something which I value. Normally, see, if you give something, the person who gets the gift benefits from the gift, if it's worth something, and from the love and affection of the person giving it. 
So the person who makes the person receiving really receives something. For the sacrifice, nobody gets anything. It's simply destroyed. But there is something within us wanting to give to God. Uh, a few years ago, a young man in our parish died. It was an accident, building accident. And I went to see his wife a bit later on. She had two small girls. Now, no one had suggested this. The two girls wrote a letter to their dad. That the little one couldn't write very much, but they did. And they put it on the mantelpiece and burnt it. They asked mum if they could. Something in them wanted to communicate. And the only way was to letting it go. And there's something in us. During Lent, it's suggested we do the technical thing. Prayer, fasting and alms deeds. So prayer. Most people can understand the point of prayer. I want to pray more. I don't pray as much as I should. I want to. It is of great value. Praying for graces, praying for other people, or simply praising God. By praising God, I put myself in a right relationship with God. I thank God. Alms deeds, as they call it, giving money to the poor. Yeah, you see the point. They are in need, and I have it, I will give it to them. But what they call fasting or sacrifice, what's the point of that? We need to respond to this thing within us, to give to God, and not be put off by the judgment that it's waste. <clears throat> nothing happened, nothing produced. Do you remember the story of the rainmaker? Once upon a time, there was a village, they were all farmers, it was a wonderful community. The sun shone, the rain fell, and they always had enough. Until there was a drought, a terrible drought, and all the land dried up, and they didn't know what to do, they prayed, and they, they were, and then someone said, they heard of a holy man, who when he prayed, the Lord answered, so much so he'd become called the rainmaker. Can we get him to pray? Well, they contacted him and eventually he came to live in their village. They gave him a hut, the best they could. They fed him as well as they could. And he prayed and the rain came. And gradually, as all the crops got going again, they really looked after him and they fed him as he deserved. And he sat in his hut went out some time, and he prayed for them, and the Lord blessed them. Until eventually, of course, another generation said, we're working all day, and that old fella sits in his hut, and we're meant to feed him, get rid of him. They didn't see what it produced. We're looking for a, something to be produced. Sacrifice is simply giving. And you don't see anything in return. To be given to God. And so, of course, you might do something which has another benefit. Some people say, right, I will abstain from certain foods. I need to get my weight down anyway, I'll do that. But I'm afraid the other motive may come in too much. I want to give to God. And so I, the only way I can do it is by giving up or destroying something which I really value. It helps me partly to understand the sacrifice of Jesus on Calvary. Because frankly it was useless. I didn't see any good come from it. I believe that by God becoming a human being, living a human life, and then being tortured to death, saved us and from death and destruction. We are brought to God by that sacrifice. But how? I don't know. I don't see any good that can come from God or man being crucified and tortured to death. I don't see the point. Wasted.
But I believe that this was the sacrifice of Christ to our Father. And through that, we came to God. I believe it, even if I don't understand it. And when it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, I think there's a thing in the back of our minds often, well, God doesn't suffer. Somehow he did it. Well, if he didn't suffer, there's no point in saying it. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, but it didn't hurt him at all. I remember a woman once said to me, she had three girls and a boy, God so loved the world that he sent his own son, knowing he'd be crucified. I couldn't send our Peter, she said, not to be crucified. Can understand that. I said, could he send her for Maria? Maria was the baby. Aye, that's different, she said. Hmm. God loved us so much that his own son, it would break him, break his heart, let him come. And Christ, out of love for us, would sacrifice himself. Sacrifice shows no material, tangible result. It's simply giving. Christ gave. God our Father gave his Son. And when, during a period of Lent, we do some offering like that, it must be with my heart because I want to give to God. Not to say, my ticket off, I can do this and that. So, uh, actually, it's a help for us that it's a limited thing, so I can't even pat myself on the back to say how well I've done. I simply give. I find if I say I'll give up something for Lent, I might or might not. No, I find I need to say, Lord Jesus, I'm doing this for you, for no other reason but for my love of you. I want to give to God, and God is open to receive my giving. God, our Father, our Creator and Lord, wants me to love him. Can't make me, that wouldn't be love. Looks at me, and when I make some sort of sacrifice, or even when I sing a hymn of praise, I'm giving to God. He doesn't receive anything. Normally with a gift, the person receives it. With this, it's the person who gives, the person who offers the sacrifice, who is blessed and has the benefit. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hand has made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed, then sings my soul, O oh Lord my God, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to thee, how great thou art.